Biga, B-I-G-A, right? Biga is an Italian starter, came from the bakery world. When we talk about pre-ferments, we're talking about things that started on the bread side. I've been going back and forth to pizza school for the past 15 years, and I got a master certificate in all five styles of Italian pizza, right? And the first lesson that you learn early on is that we have a balance of what makes bread, what makes pizza, right? And in Italian, we say, can we go too far over on the bread side that now we just made a piece of bread with sauce and cheese on it? Or is there a line to say, this is what our pizza should be? Biga, specifically, is a drive pre-ferment, usually below 45% hydration, okay? 45% water compared to the total flour weight, very little yeast. It sits out ambient at a controlled temperature, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, 16 to 18 hours. I'm gonna tell you now about another piece of equipment that you gotta go buy. A pH meter, right? pH meter physically tests acidity of anything. So you take your pH meter after 16, 18 hours, you stick it inside this kind of um, sponge-like dough, and you're looking for a readout. If we're calling neutral seven on the pH scale, we're looking somewhere between 5.2 to 5.5. Slightly acidic. We don't want it super acidic because the flavor notes of the biga are kind of nutty, little maybe fruity in the background, right? But we're, caught, we're, we're, creating, um, we're creating acid, right? And the acid flavors that we're incorporating into our dough, all of a sudden are gonna give us this structure. If you're one of those people that like to cut a piece of pizza and then take pictures of the side shot, right? With all the big giant bubbles, you're a bigger person because that's exactly what's gonna to happen to your dough. You're gonna have these big giant bubbles throughout, right? And again, we're talking very specifically of staying within a parameter. We teach 20 to 30% biga in our final dough, not flour weight, in our final dough weight, right? Because what happens if we go higher than that? All of a sudden we're creating more flavor than we want. In Italian, we call it pane acido, right? Like acidic dough. California sourdough bread from San Francisco might be considered to some from Italy, pane acido, right? Because it's got that strong, tangy flavor to it. And when you make this biga, you can definitely change stuff. Roman pizza, for example. Roman style became huge probably uh, right after Detroit exploded, right? I've been doing Roman style for so long. Famous, um, famous place in Rome called Campo di Fiore, right? The historic Roman uh, pizza al taglio, the one that's in a pan that they cut with the scissors, right? That dough is 100% made with biga. And as the new generation of pizzaiolo starts to say, well, Panificio um, Campo di Fiore is over 100 years old, I wanna make a product that's new. I still want that structure, but I wanna make it new. So what do they start doing? They add more biga to it. And this is when you start hearing in the Roman pizza world that you're talking about a dough that's 96 hours, a dough that's at least 80 to 85% hydration. I remember competing here at Pizza Expo and I had Peter Reinhardt, Tom Lehman, like a crew of judges. And I went in front and I did, at that time, I think they told me it was the first ever that they had seen 100% hydration dough. It's equal parts flour and water. It was like soup. But when I actually had that dough on the table, it looked like a fluffy cushion, right? And that water really plays a part. And we talk about absorbing that water into flour. The biga is gonna give us those giant bubbles. And that's as simple as it is. So when you start tinkering with biga, Remember, 20 to 30% based on the total flour weight. You're gonna calculate the ingredients that were in the biga in your final dough, because if you don't calculate the 45% water that was in the biga, and then you add it to an 80% hydrated regular dough, you're way over 80%, right? So you may have gotta take those ingredients and add them into the final number. It's a math equation. There's apps now that you can get. There's a, a really awesome app called Master Biga 
that does it all for you. You just got to give it the parameters. You plug in your dough formula and it'll tell you exactly how to do it, how long the, the biga should rise, how long it takes to mix the dough, and then how long you're going to be using it. It's amazing, right? They took so the math out of it. Has anybody been uh, had pizza in Italy? How do you feel after you eat a slice of pizza in Italy? Like you want to go and take a walk? You feel light? How do you feel when you go to Chicago and have a piece of deep dish? Like you want to go lay on the couch, right, and take a nap? That's the difference. We talk about digestibility, right? The digestibility is what the goal is. We're achieving that through fermentation. The bega, there's other ones that we're going to talk about, specifically not talking forward, but there's other ones we're going to talk about right now that have different effects. So when we talk about bega, this is how come that Italian pizza is so thin on the crust, on the bottom crust, right? You bite into it and it's almost like it's like you're biting into a piece of glass. Like the bottom shatters, but the interior is so nice and open and soft. And you can eat a lot of it and you don't get full. And it's because the heavy parts are all gone. The starches, right? Starches are sugar, right? We talk about in class all the time, everyone's on the keto diet and all that. Why? We just want to get rid of all these sugars, all these starches, right? We don't eat carbs. And it, the same thing happens with our dough. So you can actually make a better dough that's better for you just by working differently with that dough. I'm going to say out of all the, the doughs that I make, historically, I'm a Polish guy. While I love a biga, right, the Polish to me, the only way I can say it for everybody to easily understand, a dough made with Polish is delicious, right? Because we're talking about creating lactic acid. Lactic acid is going to give us those kind of milky, yogurt type kefir flavors to our dough, right? Tangy, but not acidic. The difference between Polish and Biga is that when the Biga is going to give you that giant ciabatta looking structure across it, the Polish is going to give you these beautiful, fine pinhole bubbles, consistent, regular throughout, right? Go and get some of these, uh, uh, if you ever had like a, a good Sicilian, right? Go to Brooklyn, get yourself a good Sicilian square slice. You'll look and you'll see that those pinhole uniform bubbles all the way across are, are, are something that's magic, right? How did they do that? Every time I try to make it, I get some small bubbles and then I get this big giant one, right? A Poolish will give you more of those. The pH on a Poolish is different than a Biga. Again, seven being neutral, we're looking at being somewhere about 5.9 to six, right? Now these are the Italian guidelines. Polish didn't come from Italy. Polish, sometimes referred to, came from France. The Polish starter, again, came from the bread world. A Polish is usually used in making French baguettes, right? Those flavors of the French baguette, when it's done properly, are more lactic acid notes. One of my favorite doughs, if you've ever seen any of my New York pizzas, right? I love a New York slice with a Polish. The bottom is super crispy. The interior has the uniform structure. I don't get a lot of tip flop on it, most of my pizzas unless it's a Neapolitan, right? Maybe very wet. But to be able to say now you've got this great slice, even in your rewarm it, and you put it on a plate and you can still hold it and it's sitting kind of rigid and you could see the bubbles all the way across, yes, you're gonna have to work with these, right? You have to learn how to manage the dough and stretch it so that it's uniform across, it's not too thin in the middle. But when you know how to do that properly, all of a sudden, that's where that magic happens in the Polish. 5.9 to six is a great point. My, our, our good friend, Tony Gemignani. I think most of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that dude, right? Tony made a book called The Pizza Bible. Tony took a lot of these formulas and made them his own. Tony's Biga isn't 45% hydration. For, Tony's is a little bit more water. And he, he played with it. He called it the Tiga, Tony's Biga, right? And everybody said, oh, I got the Tiga in my uh, dough, right? It's, it's true. It's there. It's the way he called it then. But we're not saying that you can't go and, and make these your own, but understand what 
50, 55% hydration than your Biga does, right? Tony made a, uh, a poolish with me once. We did, uh, we did Sicilians together. And he had this, uh, this poolish we started the night before. We went out that night, came back in the morning, and we pH'd it, and it was you know, somewhere, uh, I would say it was probably about five, maybe five, four, five, five. And he's like, man, crank the temperature inside this dough room because we're not acidic enough. And I'm like, wait, what are you doing? What do you mean? Tony wanted to bring it down to 3.9. Tony's also from San Francisco, right? So Tony knows that style of dough. He loves those acidic flavors. That more acidic poolish was almost like uh, a bridge between a biga and a, a poolish, had more water. Poolish is made equal parts flour and water, right? Where 45% hydration is the biga. So equal parts flour and water, that poolish doesn't have any resistance as it's rising. So because there's no resistance, we're not creating as much of this heavy acid inside. That's why we get lactic notes as compared to acetic acid, which is in the biga. Simple as that.